So I made a short on this device. This is the new Honor Magic V2, and it is the lightest foldable smartphone. Whoa. All right, now this is extremely close. Got a lot of requests from you guys to do a more in-depth video. This is an interesting phone. I've been into folding smartphones since the very first ones emerged. The slender phone and then the flip out scenario into an almost tablet-like experience and then this thing showed up and sort of changed the game a little bit as far as what kind of dimensions what kind of engineering could be achieved in the folding smartphone space the major drawback with folding phones to this point has been the bulkiness the brick-like form factor and so with the v2 here honor was aiming at replicating the actual footprint of a typical smartphone but in a folding device instead to kind of bridge that gap for people that were transitioning from a standard smartphone to a folding one flagship specification latest snapdragon stuff 16 gigs of ram 512 storage 5000 milliamp hours in something that's this slender is also incredibly aggressive because obviously we don't have those figures on the existing folding phone options unboxing experience you're greeted with the device first and this is kind of your first exposure to just how crazy slim this thing is it's another level to it i got used to the z fold devices and yet Yes, they've gotten better and the hinges have gotten tighter and therefore the brick-like aspect has shrunk slightly. This is a different level of shrink. I just hold that in my hand. You can get a sense for how thin it is in its unfolded state. However, this pays dividends even when it's in its folded state because obviously you create your sandwich and your two slices of bread are slimmer to begin with. You end up with an even slimmer sandwich. I also spent time recently using this device, which is the new Pixel Fold. Brings the weight with it. This is is maybe the heaviest thing I put in my pocket in a very long time. So even weight here is saved on the Magic V2. So a lot of interesting things here that I think other smartphone manufacturers are gonna have to pay attention to and start to implement, particularly when we're talking about folding smartphones. Also in the package here, we're gonna have our SIM tool in that location. We're going to have, I believe this is a case with a kickstand on it. It is. We've got our camera cut out carbon fiber like material and then this portion lifts up to create a kickstand scenario. It's kind of nice that that's not an extra but it's included in the package. This is our power brick. And in this case, it's featuring 66 watt Honor Supercharge built in. And then lastly, we have our USB-C to A cable. So everything you need to get up and running is in the package. You're not having to buy extras, whether it's the power brick or even a case to get you started. I actually prefer on a folding phone to have slightly more of a ridge to grip onto. In some cases that creates a slightly, let's see. Wow, actually their entire side is cut out. So that might actually behave a little bit differently. This is the matte black version of the device extremely matte surfaces that appears to be somewhat fingerprint resistant when compared to like a glossy surface you can see that the front display has some curvature around the edge the entire focus here was to create something that felt as small in the hand as possible the best way to illustrate just how thin this thing is is by bringing in an iphone 14 pro max the form factor here the weight the front display the thickness these are extremely comparable except one of them unfolds. And this is truly the feat of engineering that we've been talking about with this particular device is just being able to fit those components into a chassis that allows you to get your flexible display in there. This last portion of the unfold, that kind of click into place, that spring-loaded tension can help to alleviate some of that crease appearance by pulling a little bit of pressure against it. In the comparison video I made recently, we talked about how this one almost seems to not even completely get to the flat state, but sort of stay almost in a, like a very slightly opened book position. Now, the other thing you'll notice about this device is that there's a slight ridge at the edge of the frame when you can just see how tight these tolerances are around the entire exterior of the device. So extremely thin and light compared to other foldables. And the best way to think of a comparison in your mind to what carrying this around is going to feel like is to think of an iPhone 14 Pro Max with very similar dimensions. The case is going to fit on the back just like this. And obviously the kickstand is going to let you prop it up in a number of ways, I suppose even including different ways to watch your content on your big display. That's pretty convenient. And this is kind of what I was mentioning about finding a place to grip. You see how your thumb just finds the edge of the case? 
a little bit easier. So your camera module here as slim as possible, having this glass edge kind of drop over here. Side mounted fingerprint scanner, the main choice here for foldables because it's gonna allow you to unlock with the display open or closed. With your front facing camera, they have it asymmetrical on the right hand side. No fancy under display scenario, but instead just a hole punch, which is then covered up when it's in its closed position. We still have a very typical smartphone layout. It's just like using a regular smartphone. And when you look at the thickness actually from the hinge section where it's a little easier for your eyes to tell, that's when you really notice what you're dealing with. It's just incredibly thin. Of course, I am curious about long-term durability because they were so aggressive from an engineering perspective. Now looking around the device, we have our type C down on the bottom, got our SIM tray over there as well, the fingerprint scanner, the volume rocker, and this is interesting, is actually on the other side of the frame. But when it's open, fingerprint scanner power on the right hand and volume up and down actually on the left hand. So that's an interesting design choice there. Now this actually does have Google applications on it. Just look how huge this keyboard is when you're typing. Z Fold 5 versus Google Pixel Fold. This phone also makes a cameo in that video, including a weight comparison. This new folding phone from Honor, the Magic V2 folding phone, this thing is shockingly thin and light for a folding device. In fact, their target was the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the body, the thickness, the weight is almost identical, which is quite an achievement for a folding phone. It makes it the thinnest and lightest folding phone that I've ever seen. This is a big phone to begin with doesn't even dent it. The 14 Pro Max is by no means a lightweight phone, but I think for most people, it's a good benchmark as like what a heavy standard phone already is. These two devices are almost identical. And in this case, you have a folding phone. So it is possible. So this one much thinner and lighter. The Samsung Z Fold 5 fitting in the middle. And then obviously the Pixel Fold being the heaviest of the bunch and the most brick-like. Obviously, when you're talking about aspect ratio, video typically shows up in this format, but of course we can fill the frame. And this is, now that's a TV in your pocket. That is just a huge viewing experience. I mean, this is really where folding phones shine is when you open up a video and realize that you truly have a tablet, you have a small tablet in your pocket. Once you have an image displayed on the screen, it's amazing how much that crease disappears, at least indoors and when you're not looking for it. You're just focused on the content and the fact that it's so much bigger than what your current smartphone offers or your non-folding smartphone offers. Now, the other benefit with a folding device is that you can utilize your external cameras, your superior cameras, because you've got this external display to act as a monitor. Now you can take your selfie images or video for that matter, utilizing the far superior outfacing cameras. When it comes to the selfie test, whoa, Check out the non-beauty mode detail. That's a whole different level than what you could ever achieve with a typical selfie camera. It's just impossible for an internal selfie camera to replicate what the external cameras are capable of. Now, this is especially cool if you go into this kind of a mode. Now you have a little bit of a tripod as well. 16 by 9, 4K, 60 FPS. So this is a video test. You're hearing the audio via the microphones on the device the autofocus in action as we approach Mo and he's in focus and he's in focus. This is 1x, here is 0.5, 2.5, whoa, and 10, oh my. Same versatility for photos, 1x, bam, 2.5, bam, 10, bam, 0.5. Yeah, so lots of camera versatility here. Ultra wide, very close, pretty much close. And then the standard, this one's the best. Like you could also just crop that image because it is vibrant and detailed on the main camera. Unfold the phone completely flat for optimal charging. Ah, for cooling purposes. Look at it go up in real time. Yeah, we can do that. Hold on, we can do that for you. Check it out. Go ahead now. Supercharging. Not only am I charging, I'm supercharging using the included 66 watt supercharger. I don't think I've ever had a folding phone actually request that I open it up for optimal charging. Camera setup here on the rear camera. You have a 50 megapixel wide at F19. It has optical image stabilization, 16 megapixel wide on the interior screen and 16 megapixel wide on 
the exterior screen. Now it starts at 256 gigs of storage. The one I have in my hand is 512. There's also a one terabyte version available. We actually measured a 14 gram difference between the Honor Magic V2 and the Z Fold 5. Height dimensions are very similar, 156.7 versus 154.9. The Honor Magic V2 is 4.7 millimeters. And then once it's folded up, it's 9.9 .9 compared to the Z Fold, which is obviously thicker at 6.1 millimeters unfolded and 13.4 millimeters folded. Now this all happens while still delivering a larger unfolded display at a maximum size of 7.92 inches on the Magic versus 7.6 inches on the Z Fold 5. So there you have it. That is the Honor Magic V2. It is the thinnest and lightest foldable device that I've laid my hands on. It's, it's a good sign for foldables in general. It means these things are getting thinner and lighter and more like traditional smartphones, which hopefully allows more people to try them out and have those advantages of having a big screen in your pocket that is also slender enough to use in one hand when you don't need to unfold it. A lot more like a typical smartphone, and in this case, almost the exact same dimension as a very popular smartphone, which is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, Honor Magic V2.